I'm in AX here. Let's have a quick look at setting up a vendor um, invoice workflow. So I'm going to go to Accounts Payable and I'm going to go to the Accounts Payable Workflows. Now in this example I've already created a vendor invoice workflow so I'm going to delete that and then we're going to put it back in and create it. So um, this is a vendor invoice journal in, uh, workflow, but what we want to create is a vendor invoice workflow that can be used for the pending invoices and approvals. So this is the workflow once we click and use, so it's called vendor invoice workflow. So I'm going to add that and we're going to log in. I'll just pause the video while we log into the workflow editor. All right, so the workflow editor started and we have the design service here. So you'll see some instructions about a few things that need to be set up. So you need to uh, work through these. So you'll see the different setting options that you might want to configure. So first is I might go to basic settings and you'll see that we have submission instructions. And then, you know, you can put in notes in here. So let's say, please submit when uh, ready, for example. So uh, there's other details in terms of uh, if you're going to use email and what's the template. You can do substitutions. We'll have a look at these in later videos for the text there. Now at this stage, you'll see um, one message is gone. And what we need to do is um, uh, put an element on the workflow task. So I'm going to put on the approval vendor invoice uh, task here. And I'll just close my message window so we can see the screen. Now I'm going to drag up the end because the workflow has to have a start, some sort of action, and then an end. So from the start, I'm just going to hover over here and then connect up the start to the approve. And then I'm going to connect the approve to the end, for example. Now, in this case, we've only got an approval step, but we can have a lot of conditions. We can do check on the matching, for example, a lot of different things that might happen. But this is a, a simple one for just approval. Now, if we have a look at the settings while we're clicking on this approval step, we can do things like automatic actions, like is it automatically approved on a value, certain value if it's you know, over $75, for example. We can choose um, um, who needs to be the final approver, uh, for example. Uh, we can set uh, notifications that need to be sent in different stages. Now, the approval step we need to put some details on. So if I double click on it, that's going to get me into the uh, approval step. So from here, you will see we've got a little red um, star. So we can go up to the basic settings here and you'll see that we have um, a work item subject. So we can say here, say please approve invoice um, and the work instructions are, you know, review documents and approve as appropriate. appropriate. Okay, so it can smell a little bit. All right, so that's our messages. Now we can do things like the assignment um, and so in this step we can do uh, participant provider in a hierarchy um, uh, based on the workflow user or just a user. Now in this case I'm just doing a simple one so for the sake of the exercise and to make it so we can see the whole flow um, I'm going to assign it to myself and I'm logged in as admin at the moment so this is a hard-coded assignment to a specific user in this case. Um, we can put additional conditions and we can escalate after a certain time. So these are additional things that we could do. Now that's this step configured. Um, so you'll see in the breadcrumbs here we can go back um, to the top level or go back to the workflow. So this is the workflow finished. Um, so basically we've configured a workflow. It's pretty simple in terms of it's only got one step in the approval process um, but we can use this one um, to do that basic approval. So I'm going to save it and um, we can say new uh, approval set up for example and then we can say OK. Now for this to be actually active and being used then I need to activate the version. So I'm going to activate it and we'll say OK. And this is going to save it back into AX so I'll just pause the video while it saves it back. 
All right, so it's saved. I'm going to close this and then refresh. All right, so now we have the vendor invoice workflow, so it's ready for us to use. And we can check the versions. If I click on the workflow and then have a look at the workflow tab, we'll see versions here. Now you'll see, for example, um, you, this is active, um, so we can inactivate this if we don't want to use it anymore, for example, but keep it there. So there's a lot of different options we can provide. Now, let's go and test this out. So I'm going to go into Accounts Payable, and one of the benefits of using the workflow is that we can have pending invoices. So we can use the pending invoices to um, see the state of the uh, invoices through the approval process um, and they won't be in the open orders, uh, open vendor invoices for payment until they're approved um, if we're using workflow for example. So let's go into pending invoices and you'll see I've got one there for example and what I can do is create a new one and so let's pick up the vendor account um, and we can specify if we need uh, a purchase order so this is the purchase order I created now I'm going to put the order quantity on this case because I don't have a receipt yet on it so this is $200 so we can update the matching status so that's the invoice ready so it's entered for example now because we've got the workflow uh, enabled so we'll get an extra button here which is workflow um, and that's only because we've got the workflow enabled for this document so I'm going to hit submit now in this case um, I'm only going to approve it myself, but we'll have a look at kind of what the user would see uh, once the uh, workflow has actually been uh, processed. So I'll hit submit. Now um, I'll close down the vendor invoice and I'm going to go back to the dashboard. So you'll see here, for example, work items assigned to me. So I can see that on the dashboard. Um, the approval's running, it'll run as a background process, so it'll take about a minute for it to show up here. Now I can see it on the dashboard as well, I can see it if I go over to the common menu and you'll see for example that we see work items and then I can see work items that are assigned to me in a queue or a queues, uh, assigned to my queues for example. So at this stage um, the workflow is run because it takes about a minute so we'll see the purchase order 48 the uh, the invoice that we entered now I can approve it from here you'll see in the workflow buttons we have approved and what are the statuses that might be available um, that we can see it for example so in this case I'm going to uh, approve and um, I'm saying approved Alright, and so that's essentially the invoice approved. Now in this case, we just created one step on there which was approval. So the invoice would still be in pending. Um, and you'll see, for example, there's a little icon. It'll better take a minute for that approved to be updated. So I'll just pause the video. Alright, so the workflow is run. You'll see we don't have a workflow status. And so this was our document for IRU1234, for example. Now in this case you'll see I don't have invoice number duplicate checking uh, turned on. So I've got two invoices uh, that are the same in this case. So once it's there um, I can uh, post. So I'm going to hit the post button and then this will become uh, an open invoice. Now we can get the workflow um, to actually post after it's been approved. So I'll have a look at that in a later video. But that's a basic walkthrough of creating a, a basic vendor invoice uh, workflow and so you can see the basic interaction with the documents in this particular case pending invoices and what would happen to them to get a